Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. My guest today is Jonathan Fa. He's been on the show before, but we like to have him on as often as he's available just to get some updates on his incredible journey of now losing 230 pounds and going from a fast food junkie to a potato addict, which I think is a wonderful thing to be. And he's doing such an amazing job inspiring so many people with his journey. And I hope you'll follow him on his YouTube channel and join what he calls his family. Please welcome back, Jonathan. You're one of my favorite people to have on because I, I just admire what you're doing so much and the reason you're doing it. No, thank you so much for having me on. And I really appreciate the opportunity to kind of share my experience and what's going on. Well, you look great. You have a very nice haircut. You're very well groomed, Jonathan. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I'll let my, my barber know. I love your before and afters. I mean, they're so profound. And as I said to you, even before logging on, I mean, I'm sure you're going to reach your goal, but even if you didn't, what you've done so far, you just have to feel so proud. And it's just tremendous. I mean, you lost like, you know, kind of like two of me, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I just knocked my earphone out of my ear. Um. Yeah. It's been... Uh, really an incredible experience. And I feel like I've gained so much by just losing what I've lost so far. And then it really gives me hope though, because I think of the future and how much more I'm going to gain with what I have left to, to lose. Yeah. So has it been easy? Has it been hard? Has it been up and up and down, but it's been mostly down. I mean yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it has been, um, it hasn't been, as hard as maybe I would have thought it was going to be before I started. Um, but there are always difficulties, you know, we're, we're surrounded by temptations uh, everywhere in this world. It's so funny because I, I host something called the truth about weight loss summit every year. And I just finished my interview right before logging on with you with Dr. Gregor. And one of the first things he said was exactly that, that we, we obesity is a normal response to an abnormal environment. Oh, absolutely. That's been a, a huge part of my focus and in, in like with my mental part of this and just realizing that, um, you know, it, the companies, you know, they're in it to make money and they want us to want their product. And so that's what they care about. They don't really care about the long-term effects on us. Um, and so it's so easy to just fall for the, the traps everywhere. Yeah. By any chance, have you read either of the books, Salt, Sugar, and Fat, How the Food yes. Giants Looked Us? Or, okay, so you're- Michael, you're I'm a big fan of Michael Moss. Um, the, uh, I've only read the first one, the salt, sugar, fat, and, uh, or sure. I, I always get the title mixed up, but, uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of that. And also, uh, I felt like T Colin Campbell's book whole kind of talked a lot about the same things. Um, uh, there's another one you might like called the end of overeating by Dr. David Kessler. And I found one of the most interesting things in these books were that a lot of the people that work for these companies don't even allow their own families to eat the food that they're producing. Oh yeah. Oh, I mean, and, uh, so the, the big thing about the Michael Moss book that really hit me was the story that they talk about with jello and with instant pudding and how Jell-O company had never wanted to use anything but whole natural products in their foods. And they were trying to make a, in, they were trying to make pudding faster because it was an all day process. And they had this line that they weren't willing to let their engineers cross until a competitor issued a patent for uh, a food that used it, chemicals in it. And so then they said to their engineers, go ahead, use chemicals. And is, you know, before the other company could even release a product, they had figured it out. And uh, from, you know, it, that's just one example of companies giving in, giving up their ethics for profit. And it happens every day, you know, uh, you know, you look at sports drinks and, you know, when sports drinks first came out, I'm sure they didn't have near the sugar they have in them now, but when, the when Gatorade started seeing Powerade take some of their market share, and then they looked and Powerade was putting two more grams of sugar in their product. Then they said, Oh, well, we'll put three more grams of sugar in our product and we'll get that market share back. And 
they don't care about the long-term effects on us. It's about that quarterly profit report and making sure that they don't lose money. When you were caught in the throes of fast food addiction, did, did, did you even think about this? Were you even aware no. that food at the time was addicting or was just you were just kind of eating what everybody else was? No. Well, and I think it's interesting because I feel like we've kind of get programmed from a very young age to accept that these things are normal. Like if you say to somebody, hey, did you know that they put the cereal at eye level for kids at, in the grocery? And everybody's like, oh, yeah, I learned that in school. That's a good marketing technique. And so uh, they've been doing it for years and we just kind of get used to seeing it and we don't realize uh, one of the examples I've brought up in the past is when I was in elementary school, we went and visited the local university. And a big thing, not a big thing, but one of the things they mentioned was that the visitor's locker room was painted pink. And they intentionally painted the visitor's locker room pink because it's supposed to create a calming emotion or not be aggressive. And so they were psychologically trying to get into their opponent's heads before the competition even started. And again, that's looked at as look at how smart those psychologists were that they figured out that pink does that. But those same psychologists also figured out that a certain shade of red and a certain shade of yellow invoke hunger and things like that. And so then you see McDonald's logos that are certain colors and, and Burger King logos that are specifically those colors because they paid millions of dollars for somebody to find out how to trick us. And it's portrayed as good business practice, you know, um, but it's not much different than having cartoon characters sell cigarettes. Oh my God. Yeah. Joe Camel. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, I wonder why more people aren't upset by this. I, again, I think it's, it's programming over the years. It's acceptance of convenience, you know, um, and you know, it's, it's the price you have to pay for convenience. Wow. I mean, because I got so upset. It wasn't for me even just about weight. When I learned that, that what they were doing, I just didn't want to eat their food just because of that. I didn't want my brain chemistry hijacked for their profit. And that's when I stopped eating processed food, even while I was still overweight, because I said, this is this is this is devious. Right. And that's been a huge part of of this for me is realizing that and seeing that, you know, people are buying brown food because it's in red boxes. You know, you, you go and it, they that's all they can do is they have to cover up the product. They don't want you to see what it looks like when it's in the box because it's not near as appealing looking as actual oranges and broccoli and, and bright colored food. You know. Absolutely. If you have time, another book you might enjoy on this topic is called The Dorito Effect by Mark Schatzker. And it talked about because Doritos are one of the most addictive foods, because if you if you were to take just corn tortillas and cut them up and put them in the air fryer, I mean, you know, they'd be good. But I think you'd eventually stop eating them, you know, without the salt. and But the, the, what the way they formulated you know, what is on Doritos, the, the nacho cheese and the cool ranch. I mean, it was really, really eye-opening about how they, how evil the process industry really is. Right. Well, and then they even talk about like the textures of food. They make the foods a certain texture so that it invokes certain kind of responses from people. And um, the, the, other thing like this generally accepted as safe chemicals that they're allowed to use in foods. Like I was a diet soda junkie before Like I would drink at least a six pack of diet soda a day, like, and uh, you know, either from bottles or from fast food restaurants that I would get. And my family would give me a hard time a lot about, you know, you shouldn't be drinking so much soda. And I'd be like, well, the number one ingredient is water. You know, the number one ingredient's water on here. And so I would make that joke, uh, not really, you know, just trying to play it off and just to, to get them off my back, I suppose. But now I look in hindsight and I realize that, that in order for that soda to have that sweetness and that flavor that I wanted, it had to have something in it to create that taste but for it to be zero calorie, then it doesn't, then that means that that taste came from something that wasn't really food, because if it was really food, it would have calories to it. So uh, I kind of equated drinking, you know, in my head now, uh, drinking diet soda is 
not much different than drinking plastic in some ways, because those chemicals aren't digestible and, and we don't really know what they're going to do to our bodies. In the yeah. It's so, it's just so unnatural. So tell us a little bit about your ups and downs in your journey. Well, um, the, the ups have, have definitely been that when I am compliant and I'm eating whole food, plant-based salt, oil, sugar-free, the scale goes the direction that I want to go. So, you know, I've learned over the past two years, cause I'm coming up on the end of two years here that I've been doing this, um, that, that when I'm compliant, that, that I do really well, um, the, the, uh, the difficult parts has been avoiding the temptations. It's been, um, you know, I read a book, um, called, um, atomic habits by James clear here recently. And one of the kind of points he talks about is like linking chains of, you know, habits together, you know, like, so when I look back at my diet, I realized that when I started this, I had a great chain of being on diet and I, I went for about 11 months and it was just perfect that I had this 11 month long chain and then I allowed something to break that chain. And so then right away, I was like, I'm going to start rebuilding it. And I'm going to start getting back on it. But then seven days later, that chain's only seven days long. And I'm presented with another temptation that's similar. And it's not as, you know, I'm only seven days into it. I'm not 330 days into it. And so it gets easier to convince yourself. So right now, my goal has been, I kind of look back at the kind of timeline and things. And in the first 11 months, I was dead on it. The next 11 months, I, I floundered here. And um, the there is a big plus about it and I'll, and I'll talk about it in a second, but um, I floundered, but then now I'm recommitted to getting that chain longer than it was the first time, you know, like I need to get, you know, like I made it to 330 days. I need to make it to 331. And then I need to make that chain as long as I can. Um, and so, you know, I feel like I've learned a lot, especially in the last few months, just trying to figure things out and with that, what I've educated. But the other thing I was going to mention was that when I look back at my weight history from the time that I was an adult, there's two different things that have happened. It's either that I've been gaining weight because I eat like somebody who is 600 pounds or I lose weight at a dramatic rate because I eat these low calorie diets that are highly restrictive. And essentially I go from eating like a 600 pound person to eating like a 90 pound person. And I can see dramatic weight loss when I do that. But if I look back at all of the years, there's no year where I maintained my weight really, or maintained any weight loss, especially, you know, so it would either be, I'd be slowly climbing up and maybe gaining 20, 30 pounds a year, or I would do this straight down drop and then I would bounce back up. And so for me to be able to say I lost 200 pounds and I maintained that weight loss for a full year is a huge accomplishment for me. And, uh, and so that is something that even if I hadn't lost the 80 pounds, like I hope to this, this last year, I can still say I didn't gain 80 pounds. I didn't gain 200 pounds. You know, I, I maintained and it wasn't hard for me to maintain my weight really. Like I, I cheated and I maintained my weight this past year, as far as I'm concerned. And so it's been I love the way you're looking at it because you're not beating yourself up. You're just like getting right back on the plan. When you have a slip, what do you say to yourself? Like, oops, could have had a, could have had a potato, could have had a potato. Maybe. You know, I, it's something where I have to talk myself into it so much just to even do it. Like, I, I don't think I, I can be that critical of myself that quick, you know, but like, I, I, I do regret it. Um, and I think what ends up happening is that you, uh, you, I kind of convinced myself, well, it wasn't that bad of a slip up, you know, like, oh, my weight didn't fluctuate that much because I had that slip up. And one of the things that I've noticed recently that I've 
been recommitted is that my overall mood though, when I'm eating clean is better than when I'm eating uh, this processed food. And so like, if my overall mood is at like a 95 all the time, and then I go eat that pleasure trap food, it brings my mood up to 99, but then my mood comes back to 94.9. Like I don't notice that it didn't come back to 95, but it doesn't come back to where it was. And then you keep doing that and it keeps coming back to a lower spot. And then the pleasure trap food quits bringing you as high as you were, it was bringing your mood. And so over time, you start relying on these foods to improve your mood. When if you didn't have them in the first place, your mood would have been better. And, and that's the way I feel right now is like, I feel so clean and so just good right now that I, I wish I could, you know, I have to remind myself of that. Yeah, good. Do you have anybody else cheering you on? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I have um, my wife is with me doing it right with me. You know, my family, you know, love seeing me lose the weight. And then because of the YouTube channel that I have, I have lots of people that are very supportive of what's going on. Um, and, and I see the whole spectrum of people, people that are, that are overly accepting of being like, Oh, don't be hard on yourself to other people being like, you know, that that is a 605 per pound calorie item. You shouldn't be eating it, you know? And so, um, so yeah, I have all kinds of people. What was the date? What was the first day you started? Cause you said it's been just a little bit over two years now. Under two years. So it was November 1st, 2020. So the last, uh, it was Halloween night. I, I, I let that be my last whatever in, in the previous life of me and, and started on November 1st. Oh, that, I love that. You know why? Do you know what November 1st is? Is it your birthday? I'm not sure. Well, it's not my birthday. My birthday is March 22nd. Okay. You want to send me some. There you are. Right down <laughs> but November 1st is World Vegan Day. It's oh, like, is it? Okay. There you go. I, I mean, you know, it, it, I might have seen that. And and like, to me, that's like so incredible because like, yeah, even if it's accidentally, you are vegan now and it's like, what a right. great day. And also yeah. I think Halloween is just, uh, uh, what a horrible holiday for food addiction. Oh, yeah. I have, uh, I have four kids and my son is 11 and we were having a conversation about it because we, um, they eat a vegan diet. They can, we let them have candy and stuff like that, but no milk, chocolate, no, you know, no animal products. And so he was kind of like, I don't know if I want to go trick or treating because I got to give half my candy away, you know, like, because there's so much of it is, uh, and I'm kind of sitting there going, well, I wish you only got half as much as you got anyways. So it really bugged me that, you, you know, you got less of it, but yeah, it is, it's tough because, uh, and even if you are eating good, you want to hand out candy to the kids and then the next day you got a bowl, a half full bowl of candy in your house, and then you got to try to avoid eating it. Yeah. That's comes down to yeah. if it's in your house, it's in your mouth. Absolutely. Yes. Are your kids old enough to understand what you're, what you're doing? Yeah. Um, it's, uh, so my son is 11. We have a daughter that's nine and then we have twins that are six. And so they've, you know, they've seen a, a change and improvement in me. And then, uh, we've changed our household a hundred percent. You know, I mean, I went from being the dad that was, you know, I was stopping at the gas station on the right road home, picking up a sandwich from their hot plate thing. And I'd grab a bag of candy for the kids to eat, you know, and that's not me anymore. You know, uh, it's, you know, you want, you want a snack. Hey, there's a, there's a bunch of bananas, there's a bunch of oranges and there's some apples over there. If you want a snack, go eat that, you know, or, or there's potatoes in the Instapot, go grab one of those. So they definitely have noticed a difference in, in those things. Do you find potatoes are one of the foods that have helped you the most? Yes. I think that, um, one of the things that I I'm still working through is, is, um, how much food that I can eat and still lose weight. And, uh, I, I always think that I'm going to eventually get sick of this food. And the, the two foods I feel like I haven't gotten sick of are, are oatmeal and, and potatoes, like those two things like and, and rice too. Like I, I eat a lot of rice compared to what I used to eat, but potatoes, uh, the golden potato, like the, the, we throw those in the Instapot and, 
I feel like they're just like, you know, we, I eat them like an apple, which is always weird to me. Like I never thought of, you know, like I got looked at weird the first time I did it in work, I walked by somebody and they're like, are you eating an apple like that? And I'm like, they're not an, are you eating a potato like that? And I was like, yeah, it's great. It's like a, it's like a mashed potato snowball, you know, <laughs> like, oh, that's uh, funny. but it, it was a cooked potato. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's, right. yeah I'm, I'm not, I know. I mean, but people and people yet they'll say, Oh, I can't, I can't eat carbs. I can't eat potatoes. And yet you're eating them and you're whittling away the waste. Right. Yeah. It's, uh, it's surprising the times where I can, you know, last night I ate a ton of food today I get in the scale is lighter than it was yesterday. You know, like the number of times where I thought, Oh, I'm definitely going to be heavier. And then I was surprised. It's amazing. I know. And I, I, you know, I felt the same. I mean, I didn't have as much weight to lose as you, but I had the same fear that calorie density couldn't be real. And you know, I, I spent, you know, years working with Dr. Lyle one-on-one and going to the true North health center where you really eat a lot of food because every meal is ad libitum with these huge buffets. And I'm like, well, but I can't eat rice. I can't eat potatoes. And it's like, the more I ate, the, the more weight I lost. So we, we know it works. What are, what are your uh, colleagues at work think about this? You know, I mean, it's, it's interesting because, um, people get defensive right away and I don't really care. Like it's like, it's, uh, but, um, it's interesting because I, I do eat a lot of the same things every day. So like, if I'm running late, I'll bring the oatmeal with me into work. And so I'll eat the same looking oatmeal every day or for lunch for the past month, it has been Instapot potatoes, bag of broccoli in the in the microwave, and that's been my lunch. And every day it's like, wow, it smells amazing in here, you know. And then it's like, oh, it's broccoli and potatoes, you know, like it's like they get excited about the smells and the aromas, but then they're like, oh, it's just that. And um, you know, and and occasionally conversation get get conversations get sparked. I mean, I talk a, a lot about this because I do my live stream every day. And then, um, you know, I don't, I, I'm not going to shy away from the topics that might be, um, you know, because I feel like I know something and, and if, if something rubs off, it rubs off, you know, like I've, I've had coworkers say, Hey, I ate less of this after talking to you. And, and I, and that's great. You know, um, I'm not, uh, you know, in something I, I've said, I haven't completed this yet, you know, like, like from 520 to 390 or from 520 to 290. It's hard to remember to yeah, say you're, that. You're in the twos oh, now. That's yes. amazing. You're in the oh, twos. Yeah. Um, to go from that to that is amazing. Um, but to go from 500 to the 220, you know, like to be what people like, Cause I'm still heavier than a lot of people at 290 pounds. So, you know, they're not jealous of me yet. Right. But well, then maybe, you know what, those before and afters you can get, why don't you get it printed on a shirt and just wear it on a t-shirt? Right. Yeah, I might. Or just something that says I lost 300 pounds. Ask me how, you know, Yeah. no, but seriously. So Beverly wants to know, do you put anything on your oatmeal? So our oatmeal that we've been doing now has been what we call our, our savory oatmeal. Uh, so we use a mix of oat groats and steel cut oats, and then um, we use mushrooms, onions, and spinach in it. And then we use a Kirkland's uh, no salt seasoning uh, to season it. Um, and that's what we make our, how our, we make our oatmeal. Um, that's, you know, you, you said you might have some, I, you, you, one day you're going to come back and actually do a cooking right. demo. You're at, you're at work now, so you can't, but you said you might have some photos of the foods that you're eating that helped you lose 230 pounds that you could share with the viewers. Yeah, I did. So I can switch over to this, uh, here. So this is actually a before and after photo of me here. And then I got to find the right button here. I got so many different things. So, yeah. So what I did, this is just kind of, I went through my phone. Uh, One of the things that I do on my YouTube channel is I like to share what I eat because that's what people really care about. You know, what did you eat to lose weight or what do you eat in a day? So every day I kind of go over 
the food that I had eaten in the previous 24 hours, just to kind of talk about it. And so these are just some of the photos from the past couple of months. I'm not a professional photographer. It's just me and my cell phone. Uh, this looks like it's kind of our mega veggie chili. This has been something that's been um, kind of a staple since we started this diet. It's really just a mix of canned vegetables and, uh, you know, uh, carrots, uh, tomatoes, uh, corn, things like that, real simple meal that we make. But uh, the thing I like to say about this meal is I didn't like it the first time we had it. Uh, it was one of the first meals we had. And then after two or three weeks, we were eating it and I was just blown away at how much I enjoyed it. And I said it to my wife, I go, I know we had this before, but it just tastes better. And it's, you know, we got better at cooking because we never used to cook this way before. And your taste buds adapt. Like it just takes time for it to happen. Um, this is a, uh, plant-based Gabriel's three, two, one burger. Um, I have just it on a piece of lettuce and then that's a mango salsa that my wife made that we put on top of it. Uh, we kind of went through a mango phase for a little bit there. That looks um, actually, maybe she could yeah. come on and do a cooking right. show. Right. Oh yeah. She would be the one to come on and do a cooking show. Uh, this one here I put, this is just an example. This is actually, uh, my half of our dinner salad, uh, one of the things that, you know, I always thought of a salad as, you know, what they gave you at the side dish at a restaurant, you know, like if I ever ordered a salad, you know, maybe I would have got a taco salad when I was trying to lose weight or something, you know, real healthy. And so, um, but uh, the volume of a salad is so much bigger now than I ever would have eaten before, you know, like we take a mixing bowl and we put all the ingredients in the mixing bowl and then we kind of split it between the two of us. And so, um, and then there's also foods in here, like the cucumber. Uh, I used to not like cucumber at all. And now like in a salad, the cucumber is one of my favorite parts of it, you know? And so again, another adaptation that happened just because I continue to eat this. I put in here, just kind of a funny, this, I went to a friend's wedding, uh, a friend's kid's wedding. And going to the wedding, I was like, well, they're absolutely not going to have anything that I'm going to be able to eat. So I ate a bunch of food before the wedding. And then we got to the wedding and uh, I went through the line just to see what they had. And uh, I just grabbed a, a bunch of fruit and some iceberg lettuce and I ate it. You know, I kind of even ate it together, you know, the fruit with the, the iceberg lettuce. And I, I, again, before I started this diet, I would have absolutely, I would have, I would have not eaten before eating the iceberg lettuce like that on this plate, but it was really enjoyable. I mean, there's so much more water and flavor in that food when you're not slathering it with, you know, thousand Island dressing or ranch dressing, things like that. Um, but I was able to put a plate together, still have some food at the event. Um, but I wouldn't have had a problem not eating. Cause I, like I said, I, I made sure to eat before I went cause I knew it wasn't necessarily going to be, that kind of thing. Uh, this is, you know, what I see every day when I cook lunch, just a big pot of potatoes. Uh, I, you know, just cook some instant pot potatoes. I just had that in there. So this is another mango, uh, dish. I think the next photo is it mixed up, but it's just rice, black beans with a, uh, like a mango, uh, salsa on the top of it and just mixed together. Um, and uh, another example of, of one of the dishes that we had, uh, corn on the cob. I live in Iowa, so we, we see lots of sweet corn up here. And this summer, uh, we had some great sweet corn um, and never would have eaten sweet corn without putting butter and salt on it before. But now, uh, you know, we, we just heat it up and, and eat it as it is it's so good. This is a pizza my wife had made. Uh, I'll kind of run through these quick, I suppose, but this is just, uh, like a oat and potato crust pizza, mushrooms, onions, corn with a, a tomato marinara. This is my lunch every day, broccoli, potatoes, and then, uh, mix it up like mashed potatoes and, uh, kind of the, like I said, this, I, I never get sick of this meal. And again, not a meal I ever thought I would have been sitting on camera telling people that I eat every day. Um, this is another picture of our mega veggie chili. There's some sort of like cayenne pepper or something. I don't know if you can, if it comes across, but yeah, that's just the mega veggie chili 
on there. Uh, my oatmeal, this is breakfast every morning. So this is the spinach uh, oatmeal. I think it's funny, the oat groats, uh, you know, we, we kind of went from eating steel cut oats to doing like a half, half oat groats, steel cut oats. And I really enjoy the oat groats, like eating oat groats uh, that, you know, there's something, you know, and rice is the same way, like just taking the, the individual kernels and mashing them up. I always enjoy. Um, this is another picture just big bowls of food. Uh, this is my lunch bowl that I put my potatoes and my broccoli in. I mean, it's, it's the size of my head. Um, and so, let me see here, just some other quick photos. Uh, this is a lentil soup uh, with mushrooms, carrots, spinach. Another plant-based Gabriel's 321 burger. Um, one of the dishes that I make, like if I'm gonna cook, uh, I take root vegetables and I throw them in the Instapot. So here I have some potatoes, some carrots, some sweet potato, uh, have them in the Instapot and then I take um, vegetables and I grill them uh, in the stove and then I mix them all together. And so it's just this big mix of, I mean, there's what eight different vegetables. I mean, there's, there's potatoes, carrots, sweet potatoes, onions, red peppers, mushrooms, zucchini in that. And that's uh, one of my favorite things to make. Take some time to make. Spanish rice and beans. Uh, I don't think I would ever get sick of eating Spanish rice and beans. Uh, just kind of another one of the uh, dishes we have. This here is uh, just potatoes, corn, and, and some soup that we had had. So I think I took actually all that and put it together. Uh, here's another meal. So, uh, so all these dishes that I'm sharing, um, if you go to my YouTube channel, uh, in the description on all of my videos, there's a link to a Pinterest board that, that my wife created the Pinterest board. And we have all of these recipes or a lot of these recipes shared or links to these recipes uh, on the Pinterest board. Uh, but this is one that this is polenta um, with white beans and mushrooms. Uh, polenta is another thing I never I mean, I think I had grits when I was younger and I think it's polenta similar to grits. Um, but this has a balsamic vinegar on it that just a little bit on it. And it, and then there's nutritional yeast in the polenta. Um, but we started making this about six months ago and it's probably one of my favorite dishes that we make right now. And it's really quick to make. It doesn't take a lot of effort. I've actually accomplished making it. Um, the toughest part I think is, is, uh, finding white beans with no added salt. <laughs> so, um, this is again, that, that dish I like to make just root vegetables in the Instapot and then grilled vegetables, uh, all mixed in and then mega veggie chili spaghetti squash with chickpeas, spinach. This is just a recipe we threw together. You know, that's something I like, like I love about this too. Like my wife's out of town this week for a, a convention for our nonprofit. And I um, was just kind of stuck at the house. You know, I, I'm, I'm fending for myself in some ways. Um, and I just love that I could just take ingredients that I had around and just kind of throw them all together and just make a, a medley of food and it's enjoyable. Um, I think I have photo of this. This is another one of the things I really enjoy. This is Linda's meatloaf. Um, I think it's one of the Esselstein's recipes from, uh, one of their cookbooks. Uh, another picture of the polenta potato salad. Again, big, bright, beautiful colors. Like I said, I'm not eating brown food that comes in red boxes anymore. Um, this is a pineapple rice. This is, I think there's pineapple in there real good. This was barley. I had not had barley um, that I can remember. And this was a barley soup that uh, we made. Uh, the first bowl had lots of broth in it. And then the second bowl, we used all the broth up, but this was great. Again, the barley also had that really, that great texture and, and kind of the same as the oat groats and the rice. I really liked it. Um, bananas. Uh, and this is the meal I cooked last night. So these are the last photos that will be done. Uh, I just threw onions and mushrooms in the pan and cooked them up. 
and threw some root vegetables there. Took a can of diced tomatoes, threw it on the veggies, uh, and then mixed it together. So, sorry, I kind of went on there, but that's uh, that's the food I eat. So, <laughs> well, I think your food looks delicious. Great, yeah. So, um, and the main yeah. thing is, is, as long as you think it's delicious, that's all that matters. Yeah. It. Oh, yeah. I love all the flavors of the food that I've been eating now. And, and like I said, when you get rid of the, the salt and all the processed foods, the, the actual, um, you know, it, it's a, I know the true North has had a quote, you know, like good food tar- start to stay, starts to taste good. We again. serve, we, we, we make good food taste, not bad. Right. So yeah. <laughs> that. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's been great to, uh, kind of learn, you know, what some of these foods I like, there's foods that like, before I started this, I wouldn't eat rice. Like I've always had this thing since I was a little kid that I just, I, I, you know, I always just said, I don't like rice. I just, and then I never ate it. And now I'll eat bowls of rice, you know, multiple times a week. You know, I eat more rice in a week now than I ate in my lifetime before I would bet. Yeah. What's your favorite kind of rice? Just brown rice, just yeah, just brown rice. <laughs> nothing, um, nothing fancy. Rice nothing. is delicious. Yeah. So we have some questions from yeah. some of the live viewers. So the first one is from Kathy, and she goes, "Do you go to restaurants? If you do, how do you handle it, and does it trigger anything for you?" Um. So we don't go to restaurants much. Um. I am, you know, especially now that I've, I'm recommitting. I can, you know, you plan ahead is a big part of it. You know, it, the, your book, Chef AJ's book, um, The Secret to Ultimate Weight Loss, you talk a lot about traveling and go to restaurants. And I think there's a lot of great advice in that. But um, I really just have to, you know, I know I can go without. Like, that's one of the things I think was uh, hurt me so much in the past is that I have a fear of missing out. And so if somebody was eating something that looked really tasty, I wanted to eat that thing that looked really tasty. You know, if Taco Bell had a new item on their menu, I wanted to go and have that item. And now I, you know, I did a very long water fast and I kind of, uh, my wife gives me a hard time about it. Cause you know, she'll say something about how I haven't eaten in a while. I'm like, well, I did go 42 days without eating. I think I can go another four hours. Um, so, uh, so, but if I do, if we do go out to eat and we have, um, there's lots of great side items, you know, that you can get, and, and it's a lot cheaper to just get the side items than it is to get the entrees these days. You know, you can get a side of, we went somewhere, got a side of asparagus, a, a baked potato. And uh, I think it was their steamed vegetables. And we left dinner for less than $30. And the people we were eating with, they spent over $60 for the two of them. Um, and so it, it can be done. It's just some proper planning. You ever go to Wendy's in a pinch? I, I did. So I did the first, when I first started this diet, I was like, uh, I went to Wendy's and it was, um, I got the potato, I got to my office, I opened the potato up and I ordered just a plain baked potato. And there was something on the potato from the spoon that they used to split the potato from the last potato they split. And so there was like sour cream or there was something on it. And I got so frustrated because I was like, how hard is it to give me a potato that has nothing on it? And then you use a dirty spoon and like, and so I I hadn't gone back and and got a potato. Oh yeah. No, apparently you should write them. It's very hard apparently. Cause I I see that all the time in in non-vegan restaurants. So you mentioned how you cook your steel cut oats with other grains and Mona says, how do you do it without overcooking one of the oats? Uh, You know what? I don't Instapot. Um, My wife puts the oats in the Instapot um, and we cook them. I want to say 11 or 12 minutes. And, you know, maybe one of them's overcooked or the other's undercooked, but, you know, I had some of my viewers suggest eating 
rolled oats uncooked and uh Oh, that's not good but, for calorie density. No, it's not. You know, but it's eighteen hundred it calories yeah. a pound versus three seventy five. It's not a good thing for weight yeah. loss. And uh, but like that, really, like the the I don't worry. You know, as long as the oats are cooked enough that I can chew them, you know, it, it wouldn't hurt. It wouldn't kill me if they were undercooked. You know, like right? That. Exactly. Uh, Jesse says you must feel. Fabulous physically with the weight loss, less stress on your joints, I'm guessing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Getting around is a lot uh, easier. Um, you know, I'm getting to a point now, like when I lay on my back that like my stomach is like flat and not like a mound, you know, and so that's kind of nice or like being able to feel my ribs or actually like be able to feel my hip bone, you know, like I could feel my hips before, but there was this layer between it that, you know, no, you know, but now, you know, a lot of that fat's gone. So, uh, flexibility is improved tremendously. You know, one of the more difficult things to do before would tie, would be tie my shoes. Now I can, you know, um, you know, there, at one point I like, I wouldn't be, I wasn't able to put my one foot on my other knee just because I didn't have the flexibility and like my stomach was in the way. Um, and now that's not an issue at all. You know, them bones in those hips. Yeah. <laughs> nice. A lot of people like Nikki are saying you look amazing. And here's a question. How do you handle birthday parties that you go to like for your uh, kids, friends, and also for your own kids' birthdays? Right. So we, uh, we go to a place called natural grocers and we bring our own cupcakes, um, for our kids stuff. So, so I don't worry about going to parties. Um, so this most recent, birthday party our twins just turned six and we ended up um having a party at a roller skate rink and we went to papa murphy's and got our kids a take and bake pizza and then we ordered uh pizza for everybody else so everybody had pizza our kids you know they didn't have the same pizza as everybody else but they had a pizza that they enjoy they've had they've enjoyed um, there's a place called your pie. That's not kind of now the place that our kids would prefer to go. Um, so, uh, like family birthday parties, you know, they will make sure that, you know, we let the parent know, or if it's a friend's birthday party, Hey, you know, we're vegan or we don't eat anything with animal products in it. Um, sometimes they'll accommodate and they'll be like, Oh, Hey, yeah, you know, I'll go get non-dairy ice cream. And, I like to let them know because uh, it's been a while since I've had dairy ice cream, but I've had non-dairy ice cream recently. And I think it's better than dairy ice cream was uh, like the almond flavor from the almond. Anyways, shouldn't be eating it though. Don't eat it. <laughs> Anyways, um, the uh, so yeah, we call ahead. Sometimes they say they'll take care of something if they are like, okay, or they don't say that they're going to take care. We'll, we'll just say, Hey, we're going to bring cupcakes. You know, we'll bring our kids cupcakes for them. Uh, that way they still get to have a treat, um, with the other kids. Sometimes we have to bring food. Uh, people are being pretty accommodating these days. So that's great. When you have what I like to call a snack accident, does it make it harder for you the next day to enjoy the food that you're eating? like the healthy food again? Yeah. Uh, no. Um, I, it makes it hard to not have another snack, snack accident, you know, that's for sure. Uh, but the, um, yeah, it, it's like I said, you, you convince yourself you, you do. It, it's all this mental game that you're playing with yourself constantly. You know, like you had to do so much work to convince yourself to make that bad choice then you're going to start justifying that bad choice. And, um, and if you can make yourself, there's an example in the pleasure trap book where they talk about like when you go to a family event and your aunt tries to push the dish on you and you can, if you can resist that temptation, then you, you come out of that event stronger. But if you fall for that temptation, the next time that event happens, that temptation gets presented again and you're not as strong because you failed to, to stand up against it last time. And I think that happens with junk food in the short term too. You know, like I failed to stand up to that temptation yesterday. 
And so that temptation then gains power over me today uh, because it won yesterday. Yeah, absolutely. So Rebecca wants to know, when somebody brand new to this way of eating asks you about it, what are the top three resources you direct them to that are simple and helpful? So uh, again, in the description box below on all my videos, I have a list of all the books that I have read. Um, the book, The Pleasure Trap, I, I absolutely recommend that book. I really think it is a great book. And even if you took all the diet stuff out of The Pleasure Trap, there's a lot of psychological things that they talk about that uh, I think people need to hear. Um, the next book I did read was Joel Furman's book, uh, Eat to Live, right? I think that's the, the title of it. Um, I also thought that was a great book too. Like those two books were great books for me. Um, and then, you know, finding out how to cook this way, how to eat this way is important too. You know, when we first started, I can remember staring at a pantry that was full of food and thinking, I don't know how to cook a single thing in front of me right now, because for me, it was macaroni and cheese in a box or frozen pizzas, you know, I mean, it wasn't quinoas and lentils and uh, vegetables and things like that. Yeah. Let's see if we have any other questions. Maybe tell us about your YouTube channel. How If they want to watch you live, is it the same time every day? Is it seven days a week? How does that work? Yeah. So, um, with my, uh, live channel, uh, I go live most weekdays, like five days a week. Uh, and I go live at 4 PM central time. Uh, it's really, uh, just, it's a convenient time that works for me. Sometimes I'll go on a little bit later because I, I, I go on right after I get done with work. So sometimes work causes me to go a little bit late. So I'll get online. Um, uh, around 4 PM, most weekdays. I don't live stream on the weekends. Um, I do a weekly weigh in on Wednesdays where I kind of just look at my progress or lack of progress from the week before and kind of, you know, it keeps me accountable and keeps me kind of on, on plan. What I was thinking is we should have like, um, like monthly check-ins here to keep you accountable. <laughs> yeah, you know, absolutely. Um, uh, really the accountability is a big part of it too. You know, like there's, there's lots of things where I look back and I say, well, that's a big part of this. And that's a big part of this. And, and accountability has helped um, having people who check in on me and kind of say, Hey, you know, uh, maybe try this, or, you know, maybe, you know, you're not drinking enough water or you have, you know, uh, and um, it keeps me going. So. Yeah. Susanna wants to know how you met your wife and she loves that. She's so supportive of you. Oh my. Um, yes. Me and my wife, we met on eHarmony back when internet dating was a thing you didn't tell anybody about. So, um, yeah, I met my wife in 2007 through eHarmony. Uh, she lived, uh, three hours away from me and we traveled for the first, uh, while and then uh yeah she moved up here and got four kids and doing all that i'm just curious you know because you were heavy for a long time so what was it about november 1st 2020 20. i guess it was that that like where you just said okay i'm gonna do this because it's not i mean you're, you're really young it's not, not like you had a heart attack or diabetes you know you just seemed to make up your mind that day Right. Well, you know, there's a lot of things that I suppose that led up to that point. And, um, the, uh, the first thing was, you know, one of the things I always tell people is that you got to get started right away. You know, like I, I, I drug my feet for so long. And the first thing that ever really sparked it in my mind, it, it didn't cause any real action, but in March of 2020, um, my daughter, I had to take her to the doctor and we were leaving the, eye do the doctor's office. And as we were walking down the hallway, there was a large scale on the ground. And um, I, I was like, oh, that's a scale. And it looks like it would weigh me, you know, and I kind of look back and I look forward and there's nobody in the hallway. And so I was like, hey, hon, just wait right here real quick. And I went and I hopped on the scale and it popped up and it said like, 
I, I can't remember the it said like 2 30 or something like that. And I was like, holy cow, it was less than that, but it was it was two something. And I was like, what the heck? And then I looked at it and it said kilograms. And so then I got into my car and I did the math and I was 515 pounds, you know? And so that's really kind of like the first realization, like I'm over 500 pounds. And then the, the kind of March happened, March, 2020 happened and everything shut down. And, you know, I think in my head, I kind of had this, you know, if the food goes away, I'm going to, I'm going to live the longest because I got the most fat on my body. So, you know, maybe if I pack on a few more pounds, I'll live even longer when all the food goes away. So I, I didn't, you know, there's people that use that moment to say, Hey, I need to get healthy and avoid this thing. And then there's other people that said, you know, who cares? And I think I kind of, uh, drug it out, but, um, but then I just started doing little things over time, like over the, like I started taking care of my hair, like it seems simple, but like I changed my hairstyle up. And then, um, so then I was looking at myself in the mirror more and paying attention to maybe my face a little bit more. Uh, and then there was a Amazon prime thing where I got this watch. I got this, I think I showed it last time. Um, it's a Garmin watch that was recording my heart rate. And I started seeing that my heart rate was really like going from like being normal to like just super high for just dumb thing, like going to the refrigerator and grabbing something. So, um, so yeah, so those things kind of built up and then I decided, cause I was going to fast, like that was my thing. I was going to do fasting. That was going to be, um, my thing. And, and I was going to create this accountability platform to hold me to these fasts on YouTube. And, uh, and then I kind of picked an arbitrary date, but, uh, I was actually heavier before I started my YouTube channel than the day I started, like just the act of me starting the YouTube channel caused me to lose weight because I was getting up and setting things up and I was doing things. So that's really interesting throughout your life. When you were heavy, was it something that you just accepted or thought about it every day and just thought, well, this is, this is too hot. You know, I'm, I'm just curious, like what your mindset was before. Well, I was, I was always overweight. Like if, if you look at photos of me from as long as I've seen photos, I've been overweight. So it's been a natural thing. And then when I got to high school, it was kind of celebrated, you know, like I was, uh, an offensive lineman that, you know, being as big as you can be as an offensive lineman is a, is a good thing. I was a wrestler and, uh, I wrestled in the heavyweight bracket. And so being big was just part of that. Um, and so I think that as a young kid, you know, it, my identity really became, you know, being the biggest guy in the room. So it was never out of place for me to be the biggest guy in the room. And, uh, I just kept getting bigger and bigger. So people couldn't catch me, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> well, Suzanne is saying you're very likely have changed the course of your life with health problems. that could be just around the corner. Yeah. I think about that a lot and I talk about it a lot. Um, so at 38 years old, uh, that's when I started this, um, there is a potential that if I didn't start this on November of 2020, that I am dead right now. Like if, if somebody would have walked up to any of my family members or any of my friends in December of 2020 and said, Hey, John had a heart attack. Every one of them would have been like, well, yeah, he was on track for that. You know, it's too bad. He was still young. He still had a lot of years ahead of him. And, uh, I realized that, um, that, you know, had I not made these changes that, uh, I could have already had that heart attack, I could already had that, you know, that catastrophic event um, that would have altered, you know, my course, the course of my life drastically. Uh, and then I look at, you know, like, I'm so excited about the years I've added to the end of my life too, you know, like, I, you know, I, I, I want to live to be 130 years old, you know, like, that'd be great. And that was never going to happen um, the way I was eating. Great. Let me thank Renee. I have a little <laughs> bell now, so it doesn't bother Bailey as much. Super chat donation. Who is your uh, 
typical YouTube subscriber? Is it? You know, um, I get a wide variety of people. Um, I, I get a lot of people that actually started following me since the last time that I was on your channel. And so um, I get a lot of support from them. I do get a lot of people that come over and kind of take a peek because of the fasting. You know, they see how, how much fasting I did and they want to know about it. And then I say, hey, you should eat plants. And they're like, no, 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 I didn't come here to talk about plants. I came here to talk about fasting. And I'm like, well, you can fast all day long, but if you eat a crap diet before and after it, it doesn't make a difference. You know, like it's, you're still not, even if you lost weight, you're not getting healthier. Yeah. I, you know, the years that I worked at the True North Health Center, I would see the same person fasting during the period I was there heavier than they were the year before. And that's, that's not health. That's just temporary weight loss. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, and there, there's a, there's definitely an allure to fasting and, and I was part of it. And, and I still think that there's good things can, you know, uh, there's good things to it, but the food you eat is so much more important. It's, it's what you're doing when you're not fasting. That's far more important for your, your weight loss and maintaining that weight loss um, overall. Renee is asking if you fasted under a doctor's supervision. What I remember from the previous shows is no, you didn't. I did not. I, uh, I had built up, I had done fasting over like the previous years, um, a few different fasts, but I didn't do it under medical supervision. Um, I would recommend you do it under medical supervision. And I think that you could do what I did without water fasting. You know, I think that if, uh, you know, you could potentially water fast for a couple of days, but I think you just got to do a reset. If you did like a potato diet, like a mono diet for a week or a juice diet for a couple of weeks, you know, you just got to get as, you got to get as far away from the processed foods as you can. Um, and then, you know, bring in these healthy foods, because that's really something that I've learned too, is that there were foods that I was eating for the first 11 months and I was still losing weight, like Ezekiel bread, like, you know, Ezekiel bread, it, it's, it's, you know, you throw some nut butter on it and it tastes great. Um, and I was able to lose weight when I first started while I was doing that, but I found that the rest of my diet got so much better that I couldn't keep eating that Ezekiel bread and eat this better diet and still lose weight. And so, um, I was like, what am I going to do without my Ezekiel bread? I, I, this is, I have it every night. This is what I go to bed to, you know? And then maybe for the first day or two, it was like, you know, I wish I had it, but now I don't even think about it. It's not in the fridge. It's or the freezer. And it's just not even a thought in my mind to go to it, you know? So it takes, it takes time. To, you got to get away from, you have to distance yourself from the foods that you can't have. Right. Or, or that you choose not to have. Right. More than you Dr. Lyle right. talks about that in his lecture on the cram circuit. It's called the decay function. Nice. You know, if I had known that November 1st was your anniversary, right. I would have, oh, I, would yeah. have you, I would have had you in 11 days from now, but that, that yeah. we're, we're, we're close enough. Yeah. Okay. I'm coming up close. And I can't and wait. I, well, I, I will personally wish you a happy anniversary on November 1st. Yeah. Tell us what, I'm just curious because uh, you mentioned it. What is your nonprofit? Okay. Uh, so, uh, my wife and I started a few years back, it's called Heine heroes and it is a diaper bank. So, um, the low income families that struggle to provide diapers for their children, we help kind of bridge that gap. You know, we provide a small amount of diapers to people because, um, one of the things people don't realize is that the diapers are not something that you can use assistance money to buy similar to like feminine hygiene products. And so people are having to choose where they spend their money. Um, and uh, we don't think any baby should uh, have to run around in a wet diaper. Right. So, or no diaper. <laughs> and, or no diaper. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Jonathan, do you ever get scared that you might gain all or even some of the weight back? And if you do, what do you, what do you say to yourself? No. So one of the things that I, I've learned, especially in these past few months is that just because I lost the weight doesn't mean that I'm immune from any of the damage that I had previously done. And one of the examples that I have of that is that my leg, my right leg would, 
was very swollen with fluid before I started eating this way. And I even had like sores starting to develop that, you know, and I know it's, you know, kind of signs of diabetes and things like that. And so that was another motivator to get me started. Like I knew I had to do something about the swelling in my legs because it was getting bad. Um, but you know, I lost 200 pounds and I'm like, I got away from it. You know, like I had that, that 500 pound person, he was so close to having that diabetes, you know? And then, um, for a month there, I was letting the processed foods back in. I was eating a lot more sodium and things and my leg ballooned up again. And I'm like, I'm 305 pounds. My leg's not supposed to balloon up until I get over 450. You know, it didn't balloon up like that until I got over 450 last time. Why is it doing it again now? And uh, so I know that I'm not, I'm, uh, you know, I, I need to, you know, I, I still have damage from what I've done. Um, I, I don't worry about gaining the weight because I'm so confident that I'm going to lose the weight. Like that's the other part of it. Like, I'm just, I know that I'm going to get to my goal weight. And so, well, let's celebrate when you do here. Yes, absolutely. We, we, we actually, awesome. you know, we can't, we can't book it because we don't know what day it is. So just no. like, literally- well, it'll be, it'll be before October 31st of 2023 though. Well, Cause that's what, what I've like, just, you know, to. text me. I mean, we'll just, we won't, it, we won't yeah. be able to schedule it, but just text me that day and we'll do like, like an unveiling or, a, or like a stepping on the scale, you know, that would be great. That would be hilarious. Yeah, that would be, be awesome. This is an interesting question from Rebecca. Yeah. Do you ever regret making your journey public? I think that's what's keeping you accountable is what I would imagine. Right. It does keep me accountable. Uh, I don't, uh, I don't generally regret many things because I'm happy with where I'm at in the current moment. So, um, but uh, as far as regretting it, uh, I was thinking about it a little bit the other day because uh, I was thinking about the accountability that it creates. And uh, no, it, it would be, I do feel like I, I, I owe it to these people to keep posting, you know, and so I could see where people would regret it, but I'm very happy and uh, it hasn't uh, been an issue yet. Do you have anyone to talk you off the ledge? Do I have what? Like uh, like someone to talk you off the ledge. Like if you were down in the dumps or going to eat something. Uh, Do you have well, a- I'm sure my wife would be the one. Um, my wife also, you know, I'm the one that my wife tells people to go talk to if they're on the ledge. So it's kind of something, you know, I, I'm that person for a lot of people, I suppose. But um, so my wife, I suppose, would be that person for me. Yeah. Okay. Well, she's out of town. So text me if you right. have any problems. <laughs> oh, no. Well, you know, it's, you know, like I said, if it's in your house, it's in your mouth. I don't have anything in my house that would be, you know, something that I have any temptation towards. Um, and I know that a, a uh, Instapot of potatoes is 30 minutes away. You know, like I can, the time it takes to prep them, throw them in there, heat them up, let them sit for a minute. I can get something in 30 minutes. And I fasted for 42 days. If I got to go another 30 minutes, I can go 30 minutes. All right. Well, I, I really admire you. I, I'm so thrilled with your success and I enjoy following it. So please keep me in the loop and, you know, we'll set some times up to come back just to make sure you're going in the right direction, which we know you are because we, we believe in you and I just, yeah. you look so good. And I, and I do, Thank I you. love that haircut. So great haircut. So, yeah. And if anybody wants to catch up with me, I'm going to go live here in a little bit. If they have any other questions, they can hit me up later today too. So that sounds great. But think about getting that t-shirt seriously, walking around with it. That oh yeah. Be- with the before and after. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That would, that would be great. Cause then people would be like, I mean, I bet a lot of people would stop you. Yeah. That, like that photo there, I suppose. Yeah, right? uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you, or and then you have the front one you can put on the back, right. but you know, and then there you go. I could have yeah, both of them on there. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, right now yeah. ask me how. Yeah, you know, the number of times I have been like, man, I wish I had the confidence to go up and talk to this person, pushing that shopping cart, and be like, you know, I could help you out, you know. Yeah, but, but you uh, can't because that was oh, you. No. You know. Right. You know? Oh yeah, absolutely. I would have. I would have. <laughs> told them off just as fast right absolutely well thanks for having me of course anytime you're inspiring a lot of people thanks so much jonathan yeah have a great day
Take care. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when my guest is Jackie Tarleton. She works with Dr. Vanessa Mendez, one of the most wonderful plant-based doctors. She's a GI doctor and she is a health